The teeth of these prehistoric predators could turn flesh into mincemeat and crack through bone like we chomp through carrots. While their name makes them sound like an ancient ancestor of Africa's infamous giggle pups, they actually aren't even related. Let's take a toothy trek into history with Hyenodon. Hi, I'm Talia Louie Mary, and you're watching Paleologic. Today, we're getting down to the tooth of the matter of an extinct animal we've gotten to know mostly through its teeth. We're talking about Hyenodon. Hyenas have roamed the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia for millions of years, evolving and adapting to almost every niche in the continent. Today, they continue to thrive in a world shaped by human expansion. If you're fascinated by learning all about hyenas or any other predator, then you need to check out the Predator Perspective series over at Love Nature. It explores the world of hyenas, showing their life from their point of view. You can learn about their behavior and how they interact with their environment. They have an entire playlist dedicated to hyenas. Don't be surprised when you find yourself watching the rest of the amazing content Love Nature has to offer. Their award-winning library of 4K natural history series and documentaries takes viewers on a journey through the wild and untamed parts of our planet, where they can witness the beauty and wonder of nature up close and personal. Their content is 100% factual and provides a deeper understanding of the natural world that surrounds us. Experience the power of nature and learn more about the planet we live on. Go subscribe to Love Nature, where they release several videos a week. You can even check out how to watch their content on TV by visiting lovenature.com slash channel finder or visiting their social media. Now back to the hyenodon. When we say hyenodon, we're actually referring to an entire extinct genus of animals. There were over 20 hyenodon species, making it one of the most successful genera of their now extinct family. So we've got a few different specimens so within hyenodon here, and it's really cool because it shows the diversity within hyenodon today. So this is one of the bigger ones called Hemipsalodon grandis. This is also a pretty big leg bone from Hemipsalodon. This is the femur, so this is the thigh bone. And if we want to compare it to one of the smaller ones, here's another hyenodon question mark specimen. So we know it's within the genus hyenodon. We don't know the species. So you want to see it beside the Hemipsalodon skull, a lot smaller for sure. And the femur of this guy, also smaller than the Hemipsalodon femur. Hyenodon means hyena tooth, but other than both being expert meat-loving predators, this is where the connection between these ancient creatures and modern-day hyenas ends. Hyenodons were creodonts, an extinct order of meat-eating animals. Creodonts represent about 180 species, most of which were somewhere between a mongoose and a red fox in terms of shape and size. Some examples were the cat-like Patriophelis, the hypercarnivore Sarcastodon, and the wolf civet-like Tritemnodon. Hyenas belong to the order Carnivora, whose ancient groups, like the hyena-like Percrocutidae, the cat-like Stenoplasictus, and the hotly debated false saber-toothed cat Nimravidae, coexisted with creodonts. Hyenidae, the family that modern hyenas are part of, diverged from Filiformia, the cat branch of Carnivora, about 30 million years ago. While they ranged greatly in size, all hyenodons were efficient predators with long, narrow skulls and specialized teeth. The smallest hyenodon, Hyenodon microdon, was probably about the size of a house cat. The biggest rivaled the largest mammalian terrestrial carnivores of their time. The most gigantic of them all was Hyenodon gigas. Its skull was estimated to be 60 centimeters long, making this gigantor about 3 meters long in total and over 1 meter tall. That's as long as the largest male polar bear. Though a polar bear would be more than twice as heavy as a slim and sleek Hyenodon gigas. Fossils of gigas have so far proved to be very elusive, and this extinct giant has been identified entirely from a single ungual, the toe bone that ends in a nail, claw, or hoof, as well as, you guessed it, a handful of teeth. 
The razor-sharp teeth of hyenodons resembled those of a cat, but their bodies would have been more canine than feline. Looking at its close relative, the Nimravid, which is a little bit closer to cats, these are more likely to be hunters because they have the saber teeth and they've got more robust limbs for chasing after their prey. And so Hyenodon likely would have been picking up the scraps of Nimravid's prey. They may have even resembled the recently extinct Tasmanian wolf, the thylacine, which we've already explored on this channel. Hyenodon species were wide-ranging, and could be found across the world. The round about 10 hyenodon species of North America were present from the late Middle Eocene epoch to the Oligocene, which ended about 23 million years ago. Their approximately 11 European cousins roamed from the late Eocene to the Oligocene. The estimated eight Asian species appeared first and survived a lot longer, living from the late Middle Eocene to the Miocene. We also know hyenodons moved into the Afro-Arabian region during the Middle Miocene between about 16 and 11.6 million years ago, and lived there until they died out by the end of the Miocene. Their likely place of origin is presumed to be Asia. We know this because two species of hyenodon appeared quite suddenly in North America, which supports the theory that these species wandered over from Asia. The European species showed up much later, and it is believed that they similarly made the trek from their Asian point of origin. Similar to other carnivores of their time, hyenodons had massive skulls and relatively small brains. By today's animal standards, these bobble-headed beasts had comically large heads. Specialized vertebrae in their necks were enlarged to accommodate the super strong muscles they required to support their giant noggins. So one of the vertebrae on the back of the neck, it's called the sagittal crest, has this big projection of bone. And so that's gonna be another muscle attachment site. And a lot of those muscles are going to be used to hold up this big, heavy head. So you'll notice it's got a really big head and kind of a scrawny looking body. Because they were scavengers, they didn't need to have a big, strong body used for hunting or chasing after prey. They just needed a big, strong jaw for tearing apart bits of meat. But what humongous head would be complete without a set of giant jaws? Hyenodons were equipped with powerful jaws that were full of sharp, cleaver-like teeth. Their upper and lower molars, called carnassial teeth, were modified to slice rather than to tear. A hyenodon's bite would have sheared the meat clean off the bone. Examination of enamel of hyenodon teeth show pits, gouges, and scratches consistent with chewing on bone. On the receiving end of those bites, paleontologists have also found the fossilized remains of some of their prey, called oreodonts. They may sound like some kind of prehistoric cookie, but oreodonts were actually sheep-sized herbivores who lived between about 40 and 5 million years ago. The fossilized remains of these ingested oreodonts had distinct patterns of shear marks. At just the right width apart, they didn't match up with the bite marks of any other large predator alive at the time, making these oreodonts the unmistakable lunch of a hyenodon. Regardless of their stature, hyenodons always seemed to find the right-sized oreodont to eat. Large hyenodons ate large oreodonts, and small hyenodons ate small oreodonts. These bite marks revealed not only their choice of prey, but also their eating habits. The paleontologists studying these fossils noticed that these hyenodons would leave the head and feet of their oreodont prey. They hypothesized that these predators went for the meatiest parts of the oreodont and left the bonier parts behind. Even the limb bones of their prey were chomped up and digested. So while they may not be related, chewing up bones is actually a quality they do share with modern day hyenas which eat so much calcium and phosphorus from bone that their poops are white. Finding a hyenodon coprolite, aka fossilized poop, would reveal so much about their diets. This is hyenodon mustelinus lower jaw, so we've got a couple of those molars and premolars, we've got that big lower canine, and we've got some of these big shearing teeth near the back, and those are called carnassials. The carnassials are a type of tooth that we see a lot in carnivorans, and they're kind of like shearing teeth, and they shear meat like scissors. They work together on the upper and lower jaw 
to cut through meat. So here's a much smaller hynodon. See, even, even more <laughs> variation in the size of these guys. And we really see that carnassial tooth, that kind of blade-like, scissor-like tooth. Like so many ancient animals, most hyenodon species have been classified by fragmented fossil evidence, most of which have been teeth and jaws. Because of these fragments, we don't actually have a clear picture of these animals or even how many species there really were. Other factors like sexual dimorphism, the differences between individuals based on their sex, and the age and size of the hyenodon at the time of death makes it even harder to calculate the true number of species. And as with most extinct species, and even many extant ones for that matter, there has been considerable disagreement among scientists about hyenodon taxonomy since their discovery. The first hyenodon specimens, fragments from the upper and lower jaw, were found in France, and were in fact initially classified in the order of Procyonidae, due to their similarity with our friendly trash pandas. While we now know hyenodons weren't ancient raccoons, and certainly weren't prehistoric hyenas, we anxiously await more fossil evidence to tell us who the heck hyenodons really were. So what should we talk about next? Please let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. I'll see you later.